Hey and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing something called the Monument. So once you've created or downloaded the images that you want to use, go ahead and open up Blender. So as you can see, I'm in Cycles Render. You want to make sure the video resolution is the same resolution as the background video that you're using. And then also make sure this is at 100%. If you don't do this, you will have some trouble later on with your masking. And when you render it out, things might not be in the position or in the place that you want it to be. So make sure you set the resolution and make sure you set it to 100%. So we can change this from the 3D view to the node editor. As always, we need to change this to the scene tab, check use nodes and also backdrop. So I'm going to add a viewer node, control, shift, left click. So this will only work if you've got the node wrangler add-on enabled. Definitely go get it enabled if you haven't already. I know I keep going on about it, but there are those who still don't use it. And it's, a, and it's such an amazing tool to use, such a time saver. So go ahead and use it. Uh, I want to change this now and very quickly I can do that. Shift S, just change this to a movie clip. And again, node wrangler add-on, you know, just saying. Go ahead and open up your movie clip. And I will try and link uh, to this video as well. Okay, so let's just rescale this as well. Okay, so it's pretty basic, pretty boring. Guy just walks out to the middle of nowhere, just kind of looks at nothing. So for this one, as we've already created the monument, let's go ahead and bring it in. Shift A. Go to color. Mix. You could also add an uh, alpha over if you want. It's entirely up to you. Sometimes alpha overs work better, so... It's entirely up to you. Now if we shift A, go to input image, drop this down here and then plug this into the bottom. Now let's go ahead and open up the image. So make sure you remember where you saved your uh, monument image or any images you want to bring in. Make sure you remember where you save them to. So your image might be a lot bigger. Don't worry about that. Well, shift A, go to distort, transform. And now with this one, we can just drop this scale value down. And also make sure we use the alpha transparency here. So now we've got this, let's go ahead and maybe make it even smaller. Something like this. I'm gonna move this over here. And I also maybe wanna move it or rotate it at a different angle because it kind of looks more interesting as if it's been there for ages, I don't know. If you can see there's like a, a hill, we can actually bury it or move it behind the hill just by adding a mask. So. So most of you already know how to do this, but it's pretty simple. Uh, one thing I am going to do is instead of just changing this to the movie clip editor, what I'm going to do is just split the window. I'll be able to see the mask at the same time. So let's go ahead and change this one to the movie clip editor. Press T N to get rid of these. Add the movie clip. Now, before we see anything or before we see any mask, we actually need to add the node setup. So let's do that first. So what we can do is select this, Shift D, and then we want to Shift A, go to Input, then Mask, and then plug this into the factor. And then since we've not created one yet, let's go ahead and do that. So back over in this window here, which is the Movie Clip Editor, I've just scrolled the middle mouse wheel so I can reveal this section here, or you can hold the middle mouse wheel and drag it, it's up to you. I'm going to change this from tracking to masking. We could do that by pressing tab or just by clicking here and then changing it to masking. Click new and then I'm going to name this uh, name this monument. And then if we choose this one here, monument. Now when we create the monument, we'll be able to actually see um, see the mask as it happens. But we can kind of see where it is. It's over here. So let's so let's try and make a mask. So I'm going to control left click. So as you can see, as I'm doing that, it's creating the mask. Alt C to close it. So now we have this. We we'll go back to the original movie clip and then plug this into the bottom. Now it looks as if it's uh, behind it. And another thing we can do to sort of blend this in or make it look even better, if you zoom right in, you'll see it's quite jagged. So we could add a blur to this. I'm going to do that now. 
filter blur. Now I won't be giving this a great amount, but I'll just add a tiny little bit just to blend it in. I'm gonna need to add a contact shadow since it's an image in this world, it will need to add a contact shadow. And then we'll also need another shadow. You'll notice that the shadows, they're actually going off in this direction. So we will need to create another mask. And, um, but we also wanna tidy things up as we go along. So it's always good practice. Um, so I'm gonna add what's called frames. So make sure you deselect the nodes, then press B. I'm just gonna select all of these. Then I'm gonna press Shift and then P. Then if I press N, bring up this sidebar here. I can name this and this will be obelisk or monument or whatever you want to call it. It's entirely up to you. And if you've got OCD like me and you kind of want to see the, the labels, you'll need to position it in a way that, it, you know, they don't sort of obscure it. But now that's tidied up out the way we can kind of move on. So let's make the contact shadow again, same sort of technique as we just did. I'm going to go back here. So now let's go over here, click new. Just call this whatever you want. And again, I'm gonna kind of guess where it is. Press Alt C. And then we just set the nodes up again. We could copy these nodes, but I'm just gonna do it. But I'm just gonna do it real quick. Go to color, mix, mask. Plug this in. Now, if it doesn't update, you just might need to replug it in just so it updates. It's strange, but uh, it kind of needs refreshing. Anyway, so let's zoom in and see things a little bit better. And then we need to kind of increase this quite a bit. So if you've one of your handles like this and you don't want it to be, I'm just gonna press all of them for now. Press V and then press vector just so they're straight like this. I kind of want to add a contact shadow, but we need to remember that the shadow is pointing in this direction, so we kind of need to match that. If you need to add some more points, just press Control, left click. I just did it again. By the way, you create these points, if you don't already know, if you when you're pressing Control and left clicking, you add a point, but if you press control, left click, and then drag, even if it's just dragging it a little bit, it adds the handles. So that's kind of how they, how they appear. When, so that looks okay. Let's go ahead and make it look better. So instead of just changing this to black and then just reducing the opacity, what we can do. So it's a kind of odd color, which isn't black. So let's go ahead and select this, select the color picker tool and just select this. Now it looks a lot better and a lot closer to the, the values that we want. So we can use that, but we do need to reduce the opacity. As you shift A, go to converter, go to color ramp. And also we need to blur this as well a little bit. As you can see, the shadows is bl are blurry as well. So shift A, filter blur. I'm going to drop this in before the color ramp. And for this one, let's give this a small amount, maybe eight. So, so to reduce the opacity, what we need to do is select this handle here, this white handle. Then we select this white color here and just reduce this down. The more we do this, the more transparent it becomes. So it depends how much you want. Find a good or find a close balance. That looks good. Uh, what I'm going to do is just deselect it. Press B. Box select these and Shift D. And these can be used for the second shadow. So. Most of the work is pretty much done. All we need to do is just connect this up to the white one, connect this up to the output and the viewer node. And then we can change this. Uh, I'm going to reset the blur to zero. Now we need to go ahead and create a new shadow. So for this one, we know it starts here, but it kind of goes down a dip or down a bend so we don't really see it much but then it comes back up and it'll be kind of bent because it's a hill as well so let's go ahead and try and figure this out uh, before we do that what I can do is press T by the way I forgot to do this before let's press tab change this back to the tracking mode and what we can do is just press set scene frames and what this will do is match the timeline to be the length of our movie clip so now we don't need to prefetch it because we're not 
playing through and trying to mess around with anything. Um, if you did want to play around with it, you would need to prefetch it just so it you know doesn't stutter or slow down and stop. So, but since we're only creating a mask, I don't need to do that. So let's go ahead and change this back to masking. Get rid of this sidebar and then create a whole new mask. Call this shadow. Shadow floor. And then I'm going to try and guess again. What we need to do right now is just go back to the mask here, this second mask, and then just change this shadow floor. And again, it's not updated because I don't know why it's been weird, but let's just plug this back into the viewer node, just update it. And it looks okay. Again, we do need to blur it and change the shape. I want this to be more more uh, tilted and maybe move this over here a bit more, add the blur and maybe change the color. It's maybe not dark enough, but hopefully you get the idea. So let's keep going. What I can do is just press B, select all these, press G and then Make sure we add that blur to it. Let's try five. That's not too bad. Uh, maybe make this darker a little bit. And then just copy this color and make sure we paste it into this one. Have our shadows. So let's tidy these up again. I'm gonna add these both to the same frame since there are shadows, they can go in the same frame. It's not a trouble, it's no problem. Just going to name this as well. Okay. So this monument or this picture of a statue, I guess, whatever you want to call it, this kind of fits or it works well with the color. If it didn't, what you'd need to do is go, you'd need to go back to your image here and maybe add in shift A, go to color and add one of these to change the color, depending on what you need to add color, take color away or just change it completely. And but for this example, all we need to do, I want to kind of move it off into the distance and a simple and easy way to do that is just add in our RGB curves. Then we can select this point here and just drag it up and watch what happens. So it kind of looks like it's fading away off into the distance. Looks okay. Problem that we have, everything behind it is still not faded away. So it looks stupid, it looks daft. So what we need to do is kind of match that. We need to add some fake mist fake distance, uh, which is not hard, it's very easy to do. What we do need to be aware of though is this guy, the way he walks, I'm gonna add some sort of atmosphere to behind these hills. But when I get to here, I have to make sure his head doesn't go in the way. If it does, I'll have to mask it out. Um, so that's something to kind of be wary about. But um, other than that, what we can do is just go back and create the mask. So let's open this window again, and then make sure we go over here, select new, Call this Atmo. This one's pretty simple. I'm just going to control click. I'm going to start around here. And for this, you do want to take your time. You want to spend as much time as you can to try and make this look as good as you can. So this is going to be our fake atmosphere. So let's go back and add this. Now this atmosphere needs to be in front of this obelisk, so we can't put it here, we have to put it here. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Shift A, go to color, mix. And then for this one, Shift A, go to mask, plug this into the factor. In fact, what we can do, I don't know why I did that, <laughs> what we can do is we get rid of this mix node. So so press Control and X just to delete it whilst keeping the strings intact. Shift A, go to color, then RGB curves. We, we don't need to add a color mix. We can just add an RGB curve. Make sure we add the atmosphere mask and just plug this into the factor. So if you can see what happens, only this area here will be affected. Anything below it will not. So let's just set that back to default. So. The same thing we did with the obelisk. I'm just going to drag this point and just drag it up. And as you can see, we have 
it goes off into the distance. Looks a lot better than it did a minute ago. So one of the problems that we do have is the harsh sharp line. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get so let's go ahead and fix that. We just want to add the blur here. Go to filter, then to blur. Now this one has to be quite a bit, but the trouble that we have if we do it quite a bit for this area here, it's going to do it for this area too. So we could add a feather to the masks. So go back here and just add a feather. And very simple. Just select all of it then press shift and then left click and drag and then we could actually change these points and well especially around here we could actually make them tighter so there's no feather on it at all or not much now we could do that or I'm just, I'm just add a blur which is easier but you have less control so if you want to add feathering or a blur node that's entirely up to you so if we see before and after just grab this get rid of that atmosphere by pressing M to mute it. So right now this monument doesn't really blend, but add a little bit of atmosphere, it kind of blends a lot more. Now let's press Shift P to just make this into a frame. This is gonna be atmosphere. So now that looks okay, but we, what we need to do is add some more dynamic or more moving things to the scene. What we can do is add some smoke or some atmospheric sort of clouds to roll across in the background. It's the exact same technique. We just shift A, go to color, mix. I'm gonna drop this in here. And again, I'm gonna drop this above the atmosphere. Or you could drop it behind it. Depending on where you drop it in front or behind might give you a different result. So better keep that in mind. Shift A, go to input, go to movie clip. Just gonna go ahead and open up a movie clip. So this movie clip is one from Action VFX. So I will throw a link to some free assets, but you might need to change them and slow them down or rescale them. Plug this in. And then what I need to do is change this blending mode. I just wanna get rid of the black. So easy way to do that is change this to screen. Now we have this, which is good. So again, I wanna make sure that we sort of mask off I'll mask this behind the hills to make it look as if it's in the distance. And again, very easy. We just add in a mask to this factor. Now we've already created a mask. If we go back and we find this atmospheric one here, we've already created it. So we can just use this. In fact, we want to take it from the blur, I guess. So take this from the blur, plug it straight into the factor of this one. Now we have this. So I'll just try and show you before and after. That was before and then add in that sort of mask. And then behind here, the dust clouds rolling and moving. If you want to sort of bring this up even more, we can shift A, go to color, RGB curves, just drop this in here and then brighten this up. We can see them a lot more, darken this bit down. Looks pretty good. So you might want to add some smoke in the foreground as well. It's entirely up to you. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a gradient. So go down to the texture tab here. Make sure we choose the world properties and select new. Also make sure we check use nodes. Now if you don't see them, if we press G and then move your mouse over, you'll eventually see them or if you scroll right out, you'll be able to find them. But uh, let's rename this. Shift S and I'm going to change this to blend, which is also a gradient. Then for this one, let's change this to vertical. Select this, this can be a kind of bright orange. This one can be a dark one. And the reason I'm doing this, normally I'd have it the darker here and then going off to a lighter color, but we can see we've already got quite a lot of orange here and no orange here. So depending on the blend type I use, we'll probably get a good result. So let's see. Let's go back to the scene tab. And then for this one, I'm going to shift a color mix, drop this on here, plug this into the view node, shift a input texture, we'll select here and choose our gradient. And then we'll make sure we take it from the color and plug it into the image. Now we have this. 
and then playing around with the blend mode you'll find something that looks good i think soft light should go should be good for this one i think i've used it in the past that's pretty extreme and otherworldly and in my opinion it's kind of cool so play around with this find something that you like i mean this was before you could always add just a touch of it make it now you can go ahead and add some color grading, maybe add some other objects, maybe add some more of these off into the distance, maybe some broken ones or something like that. But yeah, hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give this a like. As always, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.